Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter. Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Mastering Probability, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You hit Newsletters. You're going to see Mastering Probability on the right-hand side, top row. You just hit Subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all, folks, come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So... You can go out there, you can test drive it. Steve's got a couple great archives out there. You can understand all the different tools that he uses. Come the end of the month, you like it, no problem. For some reason it doesn't work for you, guess what? You get your money back. Great time to get the newsletter, folks. We get volatility in spades. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, nothing like doing some stock charting, you know, doing our tools, uh, using our tools, uh, looking at the patterns, and then uh, throw a little war inside of the market exactly <laughs> so uh it, it is uh, it, so you know what, what i thought we would do here is uh the, the question in my mind is is whoops I, I need to grab the right sorry sorry about that just grab the wrong screen out there whoops give me a moment to do that usually don't have a problem here but the question in my mind is, is this a war, Tom, or is this a geopolitical event out there? And it's really important for us to be able to, to answer that question. So for me, that is the big question on my mind. And, and you'll see in this presentation, really, the reason why is if the answer to the question is war, then uh, I would suggest that uh, uh, we need to prepare for a market that should trade lower until the market senses some form of op uh, optimism. So here's a chart. And we may have taken a look at this before, but here's a chart that shows the Korean War. It shows on June 25th, 1950, when the North Korean People's Army crossed the uh, border. And it wasn't until uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, sent Task Force Smith uh, uh, to at the uh, Cho Cho Chuan on July 18th. Uh, through the 12th in 1950. And we can see as we take a look at the stock patterns out here, or at least the, the, simply whether something was bottoming or topping, what actually took place. And that was a optimistic opportunity. So if folks are listening in, and I, I don't know, you know, we'll try to answer that question here, but it, and you'll see that there's going to be a, a difference. So if this is a war, we want to prepare for a market that moves lower. If the answer to that question is it's a geopolitical event, this is kind of a cool chart that I put together over the years, which shows all the different events, what I consider to be geopolitical events. What, what is the definition of a geopolitical event? Yeah, well, uh, it would be uh, something that's not war. <laughs> really, something where um, you don't have U.S. troops, let's say, involved. Okay. With it. Um, and so, for example, a geopolitical event. Uh, if you go all the way back into 2014, you may remember when uh, the uh, airliner was uh, down by Russia, yes. MH17, you would have thought that maybe that would have set up a move lower in the markets. Instead, that was actually the bottom of it. The Ebola outbreak out here, you would have thought that that would have sent markets, it did send markets lower for a bit, but we actually ended up uh, bottoming out here. Um, Brexit, you know, formed a uh, bottom. So there's different types of geotype political events out there that help us to identify tops or bottoms. The U.S. withdrawing from the Russian nuclear treaty, you know, that identified a bottom. Uh, North Korea had a, a sub-missile launch. It, again, it's so geopolitical events that have some type of positive uh, out, uh, optimistic outlook will typically form a bottom. And so right now, if we just simply line up all these other events that I have out here, we take a look at Putin orders troops to eastern Ukraine. And at this stage here, so far, what we've got is a uh, market bottom. So I think if we can answer that question, it helps us to answer. Um, well, in, in fact, in those geopolitical events, oftentimes what you'll see here, Tom, is you'll see some type of bottom pattern. And if we fast forward to really took place last week, this is the daily charts for the ES, NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 future contract. Uh, the ES, NQ, and the uh, Dow equity future contract form bottoms. They form my TD9 count bottom. In the case of the NQ, it was both the TD9 count and the, and the uh, Dow equity future contract, both a TD9 count bottom and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. So this says, okay, we've lined up for either the counter trend rally. Uh, that you spoke of earlier, or if it was, this was just a geopolitical event, which I don't think it is at this stage, but if this is considered that, then we already have the bottom that's in play out here. 
And if we look at the cash indices, so maybe folks don't have access to the futures charts. Here, if we take a look at the cash indices, you're going to see a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, TD9 count on the Dow, the S&P 500, the NDX 100, the Russell 2000, the semiconductor index, the transports, all of them uh, formed uh, bottoms, uh, the type of pattern tools that I use that help us identify bottoms. In this case here, this suggests that the Dow maybe should make a run for 35,430, the S&P 4526, the NDX 100, 14,760, um, the Russell, 2210, but but uh, I'm not so sure about that one. And in the case of the semis, which is I think what we really want to be able to track, it could make a move all the way up into that 3840 level. So we've got bottoms for the cash indices for the daily time frame uh, for most of the cash indices as we do the equity future contract. And seasonally speaking, the Dow forms a secondary bottom. You and I talk about the, yes. six, the, the typical bottom that forms at the end of January. So if we just take a look at this 86-year seasonal chart, we see we're, we're beginning March 1st tomorrow. We tip, And we don't use these necessarily to the day. We use these as a general time frame. And so we have the bottom from last week that's tying into the March 2nd area. So as you pointed out, look, the market's trying to hammer out a bottom. Did it take place on last Thursday? Is it going to be because we retest lows? Is, but there should be some type of bottom that forms between March 2nd and March 15th if we just simply follow along the normal analog. This happens to be a 36-year seasonal cycle chart for the NDX 100. And the red line is today's date. And uh, therefore, this suggests that we're near a bottoming cycle. In fact, during the last 36 years, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays produced the highest average returns uh, inside the NDX 100. During the last 15 years, the NASDAQ composite, so we got the larger indice out here, that's generated a secondary low near the March 8th time frame. So all this is really lining up with the bottom patterns that we have out here. The only thing that's the fly in the ointment would be if this is a war. So if last Thursday's TD9 and Rhodes Mintum indicator signal was a cycle bottom out here, I mean, that's really the question. Was it a cycle bottom or is this a counter trend rally? And if this is a counter trend rally, again, the, where, I, where, where it looks like price should target inside of the NASDAQ composite would be 14, uh, 246. Yeah. One reason to anticipate that this is a counter trend move is because uh, is because the answer to our first question. Well, and, and I'm sorry. So what, another reason to anticipate that this is just a counter trend move is because the answer to our first question is war versus geopolitical event. And if that is the case. Then here we can take a look at other charts. If we take a look at World War II, when Pearl Harbor was hit, we take a look. It was the Battle of the Coral Sea that identified that optimistic turn inside the markets. Uh, one reason to believe this is a counter trend rally is typically in counter trend moves. We have uh, two to four bar moves to the upside. And this here, this set of uh, this chart here identifies those moves. We've had, since the actual high that's come in, we've seen one four bar move to the upside, followed by a three bar move. And then on uh, Friday, that was our, our two bar move out here. And these are typically where these counter trend typically uh, uh, run out in the two to four bar. This happens to be a weekly chart for the Dow and coming off the March 2020 bottom, we can see that all the pullbacks were two to four bars on a weekly basis. So this is what has me believing we're just simply in a counter trend rally. And if in fact this, the U.S. gets pulled in in a larger way, we should anticipate that the markets are going to move lower. And you know what's so cool, man, Steve, is that this is one of the strongest parts of the market anyway from here to May, right? So it's like if it only can go sideways, that's kind of answering some of our questions too. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Pretty cool, man. You yes, got to love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Listen, folks, get over to our website at TFNN, hit that Mastering probability. Have a great one, Steve. Have a safe one. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.